So if you're on a diet right now and your goal is to get to 10% body fat or 12% body fat, you could be making one or multiple of these diet mistakes, which I'm going to be sharing with you in this video. And in fact, these are diet mistakes that I personally made on my journey when I first started out, when I got close to 10% body fat for the first time, it was a really hard thing for me to overcome. And my hope is that now my experience will be able to help you because I've managed to overcome this and stayed lean and been really happy with my progress for the last six, seven years and continuously making improvements. So I really hope that I can help you be more efficient and get a lot more out of your journey and make the whole process a lot more enjoyable for you. And fixing these mistakes, by the way, is gonna require work and patience and persistence, so it's not gonna happen overnight. So I gotta point this out because getting 10% body fat is not easy. It is definitely gonna require a lot of hard work, so get ready for that as well. And by the way, if you're new here, my name is Mario Thomas. If you'd like to learn more about exercise, nutrition, and personal development, if you love these things and if you wanna live a healthy lifestyle, consider subscribing below, so make sure to hit that that bell icon to enable notifications for future videos and now let's dive into it. So the first diet problem that I want you to avoid that was really holding me back for a long time from making any significant improvements with my physique was that I had the wrong ratio of cutting, being restrictive, consistently thinking about fat loss versus maintaining and gaining. And what I mean by ratio is how much time I've spent cutting, trying to lower my body fat versus actually putting on lean muscle. And for me, at one point in the journey, what I realized is that the last three years, most of the time I spent trying to cut, most of the time I spent trying to lose body fat or preventing body fat from coming on. I wasn't even thinking how am I gonna put on lean muscle? I wasn't thinking about maintaining, making this a lifestyle. I was only thinking about how to prevent fat from coming on, how do I never go back to being fat again? And all was basically centered around that restrictive type of mindset. And the problem with that is that I wasn't optimizing for gaining. I was thinking too short term. So when I would reach 12% body fat, I was then micromanaging it so closely that I wasn't thinking long term. How do I put on lean muscle? So next time if I'm cutting, it's much easier to get down to 12% body fat or 10% body fat. I wasn't thinking like that. I was just thinking basically, how do I prevent that little tiny bit of fat that probably wasn't even fat, it was just a little bit of water that you know accumulate over time as you start eating more, how do I prevent that from happening? And there was this constant restriction. Most of the time, I think my ratio was basically you know, three months cutting, maybe one month gaining, I would just freak out and go back into a cut. And that was horrible. And what I do now and what I'd recommend you to do is have at least about a four to one ratio opposite ratio, so four months of gaining, actually trying to put on lean muscle, and put on as much so you can clean up that extra body fat you gained in those four months in about a month. So if you have a good ratio like that, four months gaining to one month cutting, you're actually able to really have enough momentum to at least put on some size, and you will never get to a point where you just get too much body fat, which is really one of my primary concerns. But I went into the extreme. I went to a point where I would get to 12% body fat, and it, for the first time, actually what happened is that I would overeat massively, and I would just gain a lot of body fat immediately. So I then had to cut again for another six to eight weeks because I gained so quickly. But after a while, I was still neglecting this whole idea of momentum because the body does need some momentum to recover from being restricted through a caloric deficit and during your cutting phase. And you need that momentum to build up so you can actually get into the good groove in the gym with lifting weights, getting stronger, following a good progressive, well-structured training plan that provides enough volume, good frequency, good intensity, a good program that actually is tailored to you so you can make a lot of progress and long term having more lean muscle mass is really what's going to enable you to truly make this a lifestyle and that's ultimately the goal is for us to be an athlete not to be a dieter and i was stuck in a dieter mindset because a dieter is constantly micromanaging how much body fat you have did i gain 100 grams did i lose 100 grams and non-stop obsession about that instead of actually thinking like an athlete so this is one of my biggest mistakes in my entire journey that i felt like I have a huge gap in my 10 years of experience where I didn't gain much because I was overly restrictive and I call this being stuck in permacutting. So this is the first mistake I want you to avoid. Now the second diet mistake that I also want you to avoid that I personally made is letting the fat loss phase drag on indefinitely or way too long compared to what it should be. And this actually comes down to your mental commitment. Are you 100% committed to losing a certain amount of body fat in a certain amount of time. Have you set the right deadlines? Have you set the right goals? Because a lot of people go on a diet, including myself, I made this mistake, 
and you're just kind of thinking, well, I'm gonna lose this much per week, but you're not really planning it out. When is this gonna end? And am I 100% committed? So not 99% committed, 100% committed to do my best in this certain period of time so I can move on. And instead, what tends to happen is you tend to drag on, make a lot of mistakes because of that lack of commitment, because of lack of planning. And then what was supposed to be, let's say four to six months dieting turns into 12 or 18 months and again, this is crushing your gains because you're spending all that time being restricted and you're all the time feeling like you really cannot relax. Even the days that you do eat more and prolong your diet, you're still not enjoying that gaining process because those are instances that just happen in a short period of time, but then you're back on dieting. So you have to really think about it from a perspective of committing 100% and really getting it over with instead of letting it drag on for years. And I've seen people that have been basically dieting for about four years, four or five years, but they haven't been in a caloric deficit all this time. They've been mentally dieting because mentally they've been obsessing with everything, thinking about it all the time, constantly you know, dealing with micromanaging calories, all this stuff for four to five years without being in a caloric deficit even to see the result, but they're still dieting in here. And that's the mistake that I made as well. I've been doing this for about a year like this and I'm realizing, wow, like I need to really like, clean up my act. I need to really commit 100%. Otherwise, this is going to drag on for another year. And that's what I did. I committed. I set my deadlines. I set my goals. I set my targets. I got leverage and accountability and I just got it done. And that was probably the best decision that I ever made in terms of my dieting is to really commit to a set phase just make it a priority, let's get it done so I can finally move on to gaining. Now the third diet mistake that you must absolutely avoid on your fat loss journey that I personally also made is something I call chasing marginal returns. And in the context of fat loss, how this usually plays out is that when someone reaches 12% body fat or maybe you're at 12% body fat right now and you're in this situation, you're looking at your physique and you really aren't happy with how the physique looks like right now. You're close to 10% body fat, you're a couple of pounds away, but then you look at your physique, you're like, wow, like I thought it would be much better. Maybe you underestimated how much it's gonna take, or maybe you overestimated how much muscle mass you have, or many reasons, but you're looking at your physique and you're not really that impressed. It's not really what you imagined. And you're thinking, and I was thinking that this position at being at 12% body fat is there's, there's gonna be some kind of drastic change from 12 to 10% body fat. And we guys kind of tend to think like that, like 10% body fat is some kind of magical number that is gonna completely transform how you look compared to 12% body fat. Realistically, the difference is marginal. There's not that much difference. There's only a tiny bit of difference in terms of body fat, but it's not that big. And we tend to think that if we're not happy at 12, that all of a sudden at 10, it's gonna be a drastic change. And when I say not happy, I mean really overall size, appearance, aesthetics, and how you wanna look at it, that's really the most important part. Why you're trying to get a better looking physique. It's not just a tad bit of body fat, like a little gram here or there. It's really like the overall appearance that you're projecting and type of physique that you can be really proud of. So if at 12% body fat you, you're there and you're not happy with how that physique looks in terms of lean muscle and overall aesthetics, well, it's not gonna get that much better at 10. You will get definitely leaner, but not that much leaner because 10 and 12 is pretty close. I mean, again, we're talking about a couple of pounds. So in this position, I wish that I just went into gaining. I wish that I didn't go back and forth, back and forth and trying to get to that 10, falling off track, rinse and repeat, try to do it again, and just again, prolong that one little step into another six months or even a year in some cases that you're trying to go from 12 to 10, bounce back to 15, go to 12 to 10, and just kind of bounce back. Instead, look, if you're at 12 right now, and if you feel like your body just doesn't look the way you want it to look overall, like it's far from your goal, you need to put on lean muscle and to actually reach your physique goal, switch to gaining. Don't wait, there's no point. You can get to 10, of course, like if you have a lot of momentum, but you've been struggling at 12 down to 10, there's really no point. Like you can just switch to gaining now, put on more lean muscle, go back up to 15 or 16 and then go down to 10 again and it's gonna be much easier. Because that, that's the thing, we, we get so caught up we sometimes get delusional. We think there's this drastic difference between a couple of pounds, but it's never really a couple of pounds. It's overall how much better do you look 
and being that 12% body fat, your appearance, you've already gained 95%, 98% in your overall appearance of how you're gonna look even at 10% body fat. So the difference is very, very minor. Of course, most guys completely underestimate how much body fat they have or overestimate how much muscle they have. This is a bit of a reality check when you start actually properly going through a fat loss phase, you realize that you have less muscle than you thought, you realize you have more fat than you think. This is normal, this will probably happen to you, it happened to me many times. But again, look, if you're a 12% body fat, realistically you can see your six pack, it's just a matter of a little bit of a difference, and that's really 12% body fat, you can still see a six pack. The difference is only a little bit of a extra fat that you carry. Look, there's not gonna be that much of a big deal if you're stuck there, if you really can't, if you're too fatigued to get down to 10, switch to gaining and you should be good to go. Uh, also, if you wanna get down 10% body fat, I'm gonna leave a video here at the end which is gonna help you with some more fat loss mistakes that I want you to avoid on your journey to make your journey much more effective. Also, if you wanna work with me as your mentor and as your coach, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below where you can check out more details about that and I will see you in that next video.